hey friends hey besties welcome or welcome back to my channel it has been a while and i'm very out of practice with filming but i wanted to sit down and film for you guys today uh there will be or there already is a video kind of explaining where i've been if it's not already on my channel it's coming soon i'm not going to go into it in this video if this is the first that you've seen of me since my unplanned and unpromptu break from youtube yes i do now have bangs i'm obsessed with them i wish i'd done this like 10 years ago and yeah i feel like i don't really know what to say on the intro today i feel a bit like out of practice and just generally like i don't know out of sorts but we're here we're showing up so in today's video i just wanted to kind of run through some of my favorite reads from the year so far obviously i know i've not really uploaded since january it's now may which makes me feel terrible but i have been reading during my break not as much as i would have liked to have been but i have been reading and so i wanted to kind of talk to you guys about the books that i've really enjoyed because i know i haven't really spoken about any books since january a couple of these i may have spoken about on my channel before two of them in particular there are others that do definitely deserve to be on this list in particular shame by annie i know but i know that i have definitely spoken about that book at length on this channel and so that's why i'm not speaking about it again in this video i kind of wanted just to focus on the books that i know that i haven't spoken to you guys about so with that we're just going to jump straight into it i've got i think seven books to talk to you about so yeah I'm so out of practice. So we'll start with the two that I know I have definitely featured at some point, uh, just to kind of kickstart things. And I'm not gonna go into too much depth on these. The first one is Claire Keegan's So Late in the Day, which is tiny, tiny little novella. And it's basically just kind of a vignette focusing on the downfall of a relationship and the man who was at fault kind of realizing his own I guess actions and how they've impacted other people this was really powerful this is a very good little read i really really enjoyed it it was the first time i'd ever read anything by claire keegan and i definitely want to pick up more of her work so that is going to happen at some point this year but my tbr pile is as always absolutely out of control so i'm trying not to buy books but then at the same time i'm fully planning to go to barnes and noble tomorrow so next up we've got uh bear town by frederick backman which is another one that's i think been spoken about on this channel before and is definitely like super hyped super popular this is about a really small town in sweden i think and this town's absolutely obsessed with their high school's hockey team and this team haven't been doing so well recently and then they've got like a new batch of students that have joined and suddenly the team's actually got a chance to do really well in their league for once and this whole town is kind of built on hockey and it's it kind of sounds like it's going to be very sports related and it is to a point because obviously hockey is like almost the main character of the book but so much happens in this it's so much deeper than that and it's really beautiful and really heartbreaking and i cried so much and it was such a good read and i just highly recommend everyone pick it up i don't really want to go into the other themes that are in the book because i feel like it will spoil it which is why i'm not going to go any more in depth than that but if you're somebody who's been put off because you don't think you're going to enjoy it because of the sports element i would say to try it anyway because i didn't think i'd enjoy it because of the sports element and i absolutely loved it because of the rest of the themes that are featured in the book so definitely give it a go yeah there's two more books after this i want to pick up the next one because it follows on directly from this and i think it'll be interesting to see like what happens to the characters after like the culmination of the action in this I've heard that the third book isn't really necessary and it's almost just been kind of like added on as like a little bit of a cash cow. So the next books are all super recent. Um, the first one is The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. This was actually my book of the month pick for last month and I'm terrible at reading my book of the month books with any like regularity when I choose them. I don't know why like I get them each month and I'm always so excited and then I just Put them on my tbr pile and they just stay there but this one was just calling to me so i picked it up straight away and this is just really light-hearted really whimsical and really good and it's like a contemporary kind of rom com -y fiction about a girl who comes home from her friend's hen party or bachelorette party and walks into her apartment and her husband descends from the attic 
but she doesn't have a husband so she's really freaked out because she's like wait a minute what the hell like why is this strange man in my apartment so she runs out she looks down at her phone and her screensaver is her and this guy on their wedding day and she scrolls through her messages and she's got like years worth of messages from him and she's like what the hell so she has like a couple of days to try and like figure out what's going on and then anyway she starts to get used to the idea he goes back up into the attic for something and a new guy comes down and she basically figures out that her attic is spawning husbands and it's just a really fun take on the concept of like how all of our choices can like lead to different people entering our lives and how different our lives would look with all of these different people and i really 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 enjoyed it honestly like there was a little tiny tiny bit in the middle like a couple of chapters where it started to lose me a little bit and then I very quickly got back into it and ate it up and I really enjoyed it and I recommended my mum pick it up and she's reading it currently and she's really enjoying it so for anyone who wants something that's like quite lighthearted and whimsical and fun this would be really good as like a beach read or just a general summer read just very rom-commy very fun very light-hearted very interesting concept I thoroughly enjoyed it. Then we have one that I actually finished today and you're gonna see me talk about in a vlog that I'm currently filming, but that is Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukafka. I have annotated the heck out of this book. This basically follows a death row inmate called Ansel Packer who is being executed for murder and we join him on the day of his execution the book starts i want to say 12 hours before his execution and he starts to kind of reflect on the choices that he's made the crime that he committed or the crimes should i say that he's committed but the interesting thing about this is actually two really interesting things about this firstly the author places you directly in Ansel's brain in Ansel's like a character because she uses second person to tell his chapters which is very very powerful and very very interesting and I think really just evokes a very emotional response from the reader but also the actual novel itself is told less through Ansel's point of view or your point of view and instead it focuses mostly on three women who are directly tied to the people that Ansel murdered and so you're reading about a male serial killer through the lens of the female relations to his victims and it was just very 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 well done raised some really interesting topics about how we as society kind of tend to romanticize these male serial killers and like how skewed that is when the focus becomes more on the perpetrator than the victim and there's a very very powerful epilogue and it's just wonderful i gave this 4.75 stars which i know is me being really picky because it probably should be a five star read but it just lacked just that little bit of something that tipped me over the edge to be five stars but i really enjoyed this and i highly recommend anybody and everybody pick this up if you haven't already then we have a crying in h mart by michelle zorna which is a very very moving memoir detailing or chronicling rather michelle's experiences with her mum as her mum is dying of cancer and it kind of talks about everything that happened in the lead up to her mum's diagnosis and everything that happened after but it's all told through Michelle trying to basically reconnect with her Korean heritage and she's doing that through food by learning to cook the recipes that her mum cooked up for her when she was a child and it was just really powerful and just made me reflect a lot on my relationship with my mum and just like mother-daughter relationships in general it made me quite sad in a way as well because I realised that being British we don't really have like a food culture back home and now that I don't live in England anymore I find it really interesting that like I look at all of these other expat communities and you know the one thing that unites them is food I and mean, that's just never been something in British culture, in my opinion, that is particularly important in the same sense. Like, obviously, we have things like fish and chips, for example, but who cares? You know, like, we don't connect with each other based upon our fish and chips recipes. You know, it's it's a bit, I don't know, it's just interesting. And it's a topic that's come to mind before, but just never at any great length until I moved. And then, obviously, I've read this, and it's very, very interesting. Um, obviously, you know bear in mind this is discussing very very emotional topics it's a very emotional book it's a very sad book so if you are dealing with the loss of a parent or if reading about the loss of a parent is likely to trigger you just bear that in mind before you pick this up but this was fantastic one of my favorite memoirs ever really really loved it the title of favorite memoir ever though it goes to in the dream house by carmen maria machado i read this uh right before i read crying in h mart actually again 
annotated. there has been a lot of annotating recently. I've been really enjoying just kind of connecting with my books again on like a deeper level, but this chronicles the author's experiences in a mentally and I suppose physically abusive relationship. And it talks a lot about how abuse in, and particularly domestic abuse within LGBTQ relationships is not really spoken about in the same way as it is for heterosexual couples. One of the reasons why I love this book so much is that each chapter is so unbelievably short. They're like tiny little vignettes, which I feel like is one of my favorite words at the moment in case you can't tell and it's just so very well done and you kind of get so immediately hooked very deeply into the narrative that she's weaving and it's just so incredibly emotional and powerful and thought-provoking and yeah i've never read anything quite like it it reads honestly more like a thriller if you told me that this was a fictional thriller I, I would 100% believe you just from the way that she's just so expertly written it. And you know, I've read other writing by the same author and really not connected with it in the same way. So I was in two minds whether or not to pick this up at all. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna try it. Freaking loved it. So definitely both of these. I mean, if you're not even a memoir person as well, like I'm not in the sense of like, they're not the first thing that I reach to pick up, but now reading these two has kind of like changed my mind a little bit and it's making me want to read more. And then the final one that I'm going to recommend that I've really loved recently is Little Scratch by Rebecca Watson. This is a very interestingly formatted book and a very interesting book just in general, another that I have annotated. This one is set over a 24 hour period. It follows our protagonist who is dealing with the aftermath of sexual violence. So that is a huge trigger warning, by the way, for anybody picking this up, just to bear that in mind. The author's written it and it's almost like poetic in the way that it's written, as you can see from me like flipping through it. Like it's very, very interestingly done, but it doesn't read like a poem, it is prose. But the idea is that you're supposed to kind of race through the book the way that like your thoughts race so you know how like if you're dealing with something and you're really struggling to come to terms with it sometimes your mind can like jump from one thought to another and you're kind of a little bit all over the place and everything feels a bit frantic and you're struggling to focus on like keeping to one thought pattern because you're trying to make sense of whatever it is that's happened that's how this reads and it's very very well done honestly like absolutely fantastic I really enjoyed the concept. Obviously the subject matter is harrowing, but I really enjoyed the concept. I really enjoyed how it was done. And I just thought it was a very, very um, unique and original piece of writing compared to other takes that I have read on, you know, the topic of sexual violence. So I definitely recommend picking this up. Just, you know, bear in mind, trigger warnings. Trigger warnings abundant for this. This. <laughs> this probably that too and also this so definitely um make sure you check the trigger warnings before you pick any of these novels up but yeah anyway i highly recommend all of those these are the books that i have really loved in the first quarter of this year and maybe i'll do another one of these after the summer so we can kind of talk about all the books i've enjoyed reading this summer but with that i am going to leave you guys to enjoy the rest of your day night evening morning afternoon whatever and i will see you in another video soon i am going to try and be consistent with these uploads again i'm not going to promise like twice a week or anything like that right now but i'm definitely going to promise at least one a week while i kind of get back into my groove and for everyone who has hung around whilst i have been absent thank you very much it means the world to me for anyone who is just discovering me um i hope you stay too and i'll see you in another video soon bye